What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Accepting All Trades. So if you can't read the title, then uh, you might be able to tell who we're taking control of. Um, I don't know, just by, you know, looking around the, the setup here, it, it, I tried to give a subtle hint as to who we're taking over. Of course, it's the Chicago Blackhawks, all right? My favorite team, along with the Toronto Maple Leafs from where I'm from, those are my two teams. Like we always do, we're going to take control of Chicago. I think I liked how it ran last episode, so we're going to keep it one more episode uh, like that, and then I'm going to take your guys' feedback from last one and this one, and uh, see if any changes need to be made going forward. So I'm going to try something different before the start of this episode. I want you guys to answer the poll up top. Where do you think I'm going to finish the season? Do you think I'm going to win the Stanley Cup this year? Do you think I'm going to just simply make the playoffs this year and then get knocked out at some point? Or do you think I'm not even going to make the playoffs by accepting all trades with Chicago? So let me know in the poll. I'm interested to see what you guys think this team will do under these circumstances. But enough of that. Let's go in and set the trade block. So just like last time with Toronto, we put Chicago's three top valued draft picks on the board as well as fix the surplus to again mean anything and everything is available and our wants are any forward defense or goalie at least 78 overall all right so that's what we are searching for we want roster players to help this team this year win the cup the catch of the series of course is, is that we accept all trade offers so before we start the sim let's have a look at the lines on paper our team is decent offensive 90 defense 93 and goaltending 91 so looking at the lines now this team is solid i switched it up a little bit so you'll notice panair i almost said panair and Pan i did it again panic Taves and Hosa, um, so that line from uh, this season. Then we got Panera and Nisimov Kane, of course. So spreading out the 294s here. Then we got Yurko, Kruger, Hartman, Rasmussen, Desjardins, Tutu. So um, top six great, bottom six not so good. Defense, Keith Seabrook. Um, I'm actually going to change that to Keith Jalmerson, then Seabrook, Oduya, and TBR, and Brian Campbell, who's unfortunately retired now. Um, then our goalies, we got Crawford, Darling, good tandem. In real life, won't see it anymore because Darling just got traded to Carolina. Chicago, as it stands before the season, let's get into it and uh, see, what, see what kind of trades can be made for this team. We are playing well. We're 4-1. Only lost to uh, St. Louis here. We're 4-2. Okay, Nashville. And doesn't look like we're going to get any trades before the season starts. N nope. We have not received any trades, so we can just roll into this season, go through the first two months, and uh, and see how fleeced we can get. Start off the season losing again to St. Louis. Wow, they're really good in this game. Back-to-back um, -back Nashville games. Wow, we're winless. Okay, there we go. We're 1-1-1, one, one, and, one, and uh, the scout's pissing me off already. And here come the trades. So we are getting... Matt Hendricks and Andrew Ference, oh my god, two old guys who Oilers clearly aren't using for Roy Radke, a prospect, Desjardins, and Kruger, oh my god, that's horrible, that's a terrible trade, oh, we gotta take it, our forward depth is gonna kill us this year, otherwise this team is absolutely solid. So it's going to be interesting. Hopefully teams go after some of our defensemen. Maybe Jalmerson, maybe Oduya. And uh, yeah, hopefully they can. Uh, we can pick up some bottom you know, depth players. Or first line left wing. Because we need somebody to play with Taze and not Hosa. Panic's not going to cut it. Uh, but we are on a win streak. All right, We've picked it up after that trade, actually. We're on... Oh my god. Are we going to whip Dallas back to back? No. We shut them out, then they shut us out, okay? Look at Rockford! Look at them! 13... Okay, they were 13-1. They're now 13-2. They're tearing it up in the AHL. We're almost done the first two months of the season. After this win against Florida, there we go. Okay, so... Man, great start to the season. 15-7-2, and, and the Ice Hogs as well, 14-5. and five. Everything's looking good. Um, on paper, we've stayed the same, I think. 
Only one trade though. In terms of the standings, actually, we're tied for first with Dallas. We've got the same exact record. Tiebreaker must be in their favor. They're gonna go more goals or head-to-head -head or something. Um, but anyways, yeah, we're, we're already creating separation from uh, the rest of our division, which is good. Otherwise, yeah, things are looking good. I don't think we need to make a change to the line, so let's go through the next two months. Wow, Philly's actually tearing it up. And pff, they just beat us down, 7-3. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I was going to react to how good Arizona is doing as well, but first, a trade. Uh, another minor trade, we get Staylock for Machinter, who's another AHL guy. don't think we're going to use him because I think we got Darling, he's better, but we'll accept it anyways. Oh my god, Colorado's terrible, do you just see that? The record's awful and we just slapped them, ain't nothing. Looks like Nashville came back to life, they're on a tear, they're almost going to catch us. I don't know, this trade block, ugh. I might have to fix it. Not very many trades are happening right now. I think there's been like three trades total and nothing really to uh, raise your eyebrows at. No blockbusters, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> another nothing trade really, center for center. Moore is a good fourth liner. I think he might be same if not maybe one overall better. So we'll take it for some depth. Actually, you know what it might be? Why teams are not trading for us is that we're so close to the cap that teams cannot unload you know, teams can't unload, you know, Zetterberg or Yager or Sedins because they have such high cap hits. And at Chicago, we can't take them unless we trade away, you know, Taves or Kane, which if the teams were smart and knew what I was doing, accepting all trades, they would obviously throw those players my way and steal Taves and Kane for nothing. But um, they, they're not that smart. So after another two months, um, we are at top of our division, which is actually killing it. We have five teams in our division in the playoffs right now. St. Louis is actually doing really bad, but yeah, we're 64 points. We are, you know, Dallas has a game on hand, so they can actually tie us and have the exact same record once again. Um, looking at our team on paper, I mean, our defense has gotten better just because I think our players have increased in overall, so let's check that now. So Panic's up one. Uh, Hartman is up, I think, three or two or three. Schmaltz hasn't really changed. Jericho's up one. More, I think that's what we got him at. Um, on defense, Key's still 93. Jalmerson, was he always 88? Wow, maybe. Uh, Seabrook's gone up one, I think. Campbell's also increased. And let's see how our goalies are doing. Crawford, no. Darling's up by one, though. Uh, I think he's getting more ice time. So that's good to see. Hope we get some more trades as the deadline looms. Um, but I don't really see it happening because again the cap issue so again th it's another option we could actually turn the salary cap on and then teams would just go crazy um, unload all their players and there would be like a crap ton of ridiculous trades so let me know if you guys want to see that cap on cap off let me know in the poll in the I button in the meantime we're watching the sim here and uh, it's going decent. We just went one in, or one and two versus some central division teams, which is not ideal. Dallas, so they're prob we're neck and neck with Dallas here, coming down to the wire at the end of February. Rockford's killing it in the AHL. Hopefully they can win the Calder. All right, so we are at the trade deadline and we just continue our winning ways here. Are we at the top of our division? No, what? The Preds went on an absolute tear and now they've jumped ahead both of Dallas and us. Um, we are one point ahead of Dallas with the same number of games. Again, our division's killing it. So let's go to roster moves and see if there's any players worth bringing up to the team. So we got Lada, Poca, Roosevelt, all 81 overall. We'll send those three guys down and then we'll take Lada, Poca, and Roosevelt and we'll bring them up. No waivers, of course. I turn those off so those moves can go through. Um, without resistance. So the team that we're going to run with through the rest of the year looks something like this. Panic, Taves, Hosa, no real changes there. Panarin, Anisimov, Kane. I don't like how their overalls aren't increasing. This might mean that they're not having a great year and that our depth is uh, having a better one because these guys have all increased, although they have bigger potential. So there you go too. Uh, we brought Lada up. He was the only guy that came up. Schmaltzy hasn't grown at all. I'm kind of disappointed about that. Um, so we might have to drop into the fourth. On D, Jalmerson's up again to 89, Seabrook's back down to 90, and the goalies, same old story. So I think I can safely predict that no more trades are going to happen, so we can safely sim to the end of the season, and hopefully uh, retain top spot in the division. So this game doesn't really matter, this game matters.
I think they're one point up. Yes, okay, we pulled out the win there. So we're already at 82 points with um, something like 15 games remaining or something. So let's go here, at the end of the year. This is where we wanna peak. We don't wanna peak too early. Um, we wanna avoid that and continue a win streak into the postseason. We, we outscored our opponents um, 13 to one in those last three games. So that was pretty good. That's what I like to see. And looking at the standings, yes, we clinched the division title by two points. It was close. Nashville came back down to earth. Um, and uh, yeah, we pulled it out by two points, even though we lost a few games to Dallas there. So uh, that's how the season ended. Oh, baby. So let's first of all, we see there Patty Kane uh, was over a point per game, as was Panarin. So. Like in real life, they were killing it. That second line, Kane, Panarin, and Isimov. Uh, so Kane with 92, Panarin with 81. That's solid. Two point per game players. It's definitely what we like to see. It's the first time that's happened in this series. Um, Taser with 66. Keith with 63 points. That's Norris Trophy worthy. Um, yeah, the rest of the guys, Yurko. Yurko on the third line gets 42 points. That's awesome. Panic, you know. 81 overall did not have a great year. I really wish you could have traded for another um, Like a left winger even like 85 overall would have really really helped this team and the goalie stats. I mean Crawford took oh My god like 90% of the games almost um, And you know his stats are decent goals against Could be a little lower, but I mean that just might do the sim engine goalies just get scored on more in this game than real life um, save percentage was good though, 9-2-3, that is solid. And now let's look at the rest of the league, see if we have any other crazy, uh, crazy performances this year. So, goalies, we don't care about goalies really, do we? Do we really? Kerry Lettinen didn't let him in, he, uh, decent year. Goals against not great at all, but, uh, save percentage is alright. Crawford, you know, second most wins. Lua Price, Price had a great year, I guess the stats are kind of, uh, Kind of messed up. Patty Kane won the Art Ross. Wow. All right, all right, Patty. I like to see that. Sagan at his heels with 86. Tavares 85. Mike Camilleri tore it up with uh, with Taylor Hall there and Henrique. That line absolutely tore it up. All three with 83 points, I assume. Uh, Crosby with 81 a point per game. That's not much you can ask for. Tarasenko still got 50 goals. Crazy. Um, he's like the new Obi in this league. And uh, yeah, so interesting stuff there. And then from a team perspective, obviously we won the division, like we said, 103 points, 50 wins. You can never complain about a 50 win season. Our conference, Arizona won the conference. Like, who, how does that happen? How does Arizona go from bottom of the league to winning the conference? I don't get it. Um, so that's probably the only surprise in the West. And who, uh, who who else did well? So three West teams, Florida kills it in this game. In the simulation somehow, Florida's nailing it every year. Washington's good, Ottawa's good. Where's Pitt? Oh my God, Pitt, 14th in the league. Barely made the playoffs too with 91 points. Wow, this league was competitive. And who's at the bottom? Oh, surprise, Colorado again with 58 points. Detroit's at the bottom, Toronto, St. Louis. That's the shock of this episode. My God. 78 points. I don't know where they would go from here. They're supposed to be on the up and up. Instead, that's a huge setback. And we still haven't seen who we're playing in the playoffs. Let's go one more day, and there you go. We're playing the Nashville Predators. Uh-oh. Okay, could be like uh, this year or not. Hopefully, it's the opposite of what happened this year. So the playoff tree looks something like this. Dallas and Minnesota, Chicago versus Nashville, so a rematch of this year. San Jose and Vancouver, so the two aquatic creatures battling each other, and then Phoenix and LA, okay? So obviously some surprises there with Arizona and Vancouver. Big bounce back after their uh, real life season this year. And then in the East, you got Philly versus New York, great series, Caps and uh, and Bolts. The, the logo is so hard to see there. Um, yeah, wow, Ovi versus Stamkos, that'd be an interesting series. Just one tease all day on the power play. Ottawa versus Montreal, Battle of Canada, and Florida versus Pitt, which was the Stanley Cup Finals matchup in the first two episodes. Oh gosh, okay, I'm not excited for this. If we lose or get swept by Nashville right now, I just can't even imagine you guys in the comments. So, just for the sake of my own personal pride here, and all Chicago Blackhawk fans, 
let's at least get some consolation by winning against Nashville in this first round here. There you go. Start off with a win. So no sweep at least. We've got that. And it looks like, oh, oh, is it a sweep? Here, oh, we might be a sweep. We're 3-0. and Can we get the reverse history sweep? Get away, you notifications. Come on. No, they pulled it back. Okay. All right, they got one on the board. Let's put it away now, guys. Come on, 4-1. Let's end it. Oh, no. Now they're going to do the reverse sweep. Come on, end it, guys. End this series. Thank you. Okay, finally, Chicago avoids repeating history and beats Nashville in six games and now we go on to face the Dallas Stars so um, let's go another three games here I don't think we need to change the lineups everything's going well maybe not 4-0 loss and then we bounce back with two wins alright so that's solid that means uh, we won't change anything disappointing Rockford man get swept in the playoffs in the Calder Trophy playoffs. I don't know if that's what they call it. Call it trophy playoffs like we call it Stanley Cup playoffs. I don't know. Anyways, we're up 3-1 again. Let's finish it this time. Let's be efficient in the series. Yes, okay. This is promising. We're efficient. 8-3 and three in the playoffs so far. And here we go. LA. Alright, they're back in the playoffs and they're back matching up against the Hawks. Alright, so um, let's go two games here. If we lose the first two games, then I'd look at changing the lineups. But we get the win and we get the loss okay so we are tied 1-1 presumably going back to LA for games two oh, games three sorry and we lose 4-3 okay that's two back-to-back -back games we'll give them one more chance and then we might have to change up the lines here yes okay we tied it up 2-2 back to Chicago at the United Center can we pull ahead in this series and put them on the brink no they put us on the brink Oh my god, okay, we gotta make some line changes, guys. So before we make any rash decisions here, we need to see who's performing. So, Taser's performing well. Um, poof, 14 points. Keith, 13 points. He's killing it. Hartman with 12 points in 16 playoff games. Schmaltz, even. Where is our second line? They were here all season, and then they disappeared. Panarin, 7 points. Anisimov, 5 points. Kane, the Art Ross Trophy winner is disappearing in these playoffs. Five points assisting games is unacceptable. We might need to move him. He's already on the second line. Maybe we need to move him with Taves and uh, move Hosa down. Maybe maybe go Panarin, Taves, Kane and see if that helps. Maybe we'll try that. Let's just make sure it's not our goalies having trouble here. Crawford's killing it. 1.98 goals against with 9 point okay he's not the issue at all he is solid all right so we are going top heavy here we're moving Kane with Taves and Panarin panic we're no one removing Hartman up because he's actually been playing well Hartman and Isamov Hosa Yurko Schmaltz panic Hendricks Moore Latta on D I think we're gonna keep it the same uh, Keith Jomerson Seabrook Oduya Campbell TBR Let's go, guys. We have the talent. We just need to win the next two games, and we're in the Stanley Cup Final. Let's go. LA's played the same number of games as us. Obviously, they've got one more win because they're up in the series. So, oh, my God. Please make these line changes work. We're going top heavy. Did we just... Okay, sorry. I thought that was a goal right off the bat. Okay, let's increase the speed here to eight times and watch the game unfold here. Elimination game. We need the first goal. Guys, we need it. We can't go down. Let's go get some shots. Pile it on quickie here. No, kill this. Yes, all right. Here we go. Come on. We're going a minute at a time. This, really, this is the fastest sim speed we can go. And, okay, first period's done. Scoreless. The longer it goes, the more stressful it gets. Come on. Second period now. They've caught up in shots. The momentum, the ice has tilted, and evidently so because they get the first goal. We were killing them in shots, and now they came right back. Come on! Taves, Kane, Panarin, show up! You guys are playoff performers. Let's go. I know LA is good too, but come on. There it is, Taves! The captain has answered. Captain Clutch, baby. Overrated, maybe, in this game. Shouldn't be 94 overall, but you can't deny he gets the job done when called upon in the playoffs. Last period, tied 1-1. Elimination, kill it off, who's taking penalties? Okay, okay, all right, I see you. 
Let's go. This is a, a nail biting game. Shots. We're going shot for shot here. Goal for goal. Who's going to get the last one? Late goal by Kaner. There we go. Kane and Taves save the day, please. Yes. 2 1 win in game six to push it to game seven. Kane and Taves, when I needed you, you came through. Awesome. Oh my gosh. And just like that, it's game seven. Both teams, same record. They're going neck and neck this entire series. It's another battle like it has been in real life for the past, you know, five years, Chicago and LA. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're simulating up to the day. This is the day. We're not making any line changes. We're going for it. Let's go, boys. Come on. Let's go. Come on. I'm supporting you. I've got all my jerseys here. I'm wearing everything that I own Chicago-wise. Uh, well, I don't own that many hats, but I'm wearing this one. Come on, Kaner, Taser, kill this off, please. Yes, TBR, what? Was that Shorty? Or just after the penalty expired? Yes, that was that Depth D, I love it. Come on, TBR, I know you're not on the team anymore, but you're on the team right now, let's go. Just finish the period up one. Okay, good, okay. All right, all right, all right. Woo, oh my gosh. We're out shooting them, we're out playing them. We just got a late goal in this period. Let's. Let's, let's just go. Let's continue how we've been playing. Come on. There you go. There you go. Shots, shots, shots. Pepper quick. They haven't got a shot in five minutes. They Okay, there's a couple shots. Power play. Two, five on three. No. What? You cannot let that opportunity slip away. Oh, what am I saying? Jordan Nolan ties it up. You can't let those power plays, those long chances go. Oh, okay, one, one again. Game seven. Of course, this would be the script. You couldn't write it any better. Oh God, I can't even look. Uh, resume. We're look at this power play goal. We're already at 30 shots. This is crazy. <laughs> More power plays. Please just kill it. Oh my God, this is so stressful. Come on, Quick is playing unreal. We're almost at 40 shots. Please no. Like <laughs> overtime. Game seven, can you believe it? Oh my God, I so want to just jump into this game, intervene and, and play it out, but I can't, okay. After I push this button, there could be a goal immediately. Cause you know in overtime, goals usually happen within the first 10 minutes. If not, it's either first 10 minutes or, you know, triple overtime, so. Oh please, 40 shots. Uh, no, 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 kill it, yes. Okay, come on, they're catching up in shots. I don't like this. Pilot on, we have to score eventually. Probability! No! <laughs> oh my god, I, I saw a shot come and then it went. And Jerome Aginla. Oh my god, you could tell he wants to go and win the cup. Fair enough, man, fair enough. Iggy gets picked up by LA. He's close to retirement. He just wants to win a cup. And he takes on Chicago, of all teams, and gets the Game 7 winner in overtime to put him and his team into the Stanley Cup Finals. So, ugh, that sucks. Honestly, that was the closest that we've gotten in this series of accepting all trades to a Stanley Cup Final appearance. But no, we have to lose to LA in seven games. Those were all one goal games except for the first game. That's a crazy series. You couldn't have asked for more than that. How many OT games were in there? At least two. Oh my god, we don't even win. Oh, poor Iggy. Poor bastard. It was like a storybook. This might have been his last year in the NHL. Pushes LA with the Game 7 overtime winning goal to the Stanley Cup Final and then lose to Florida of all people. I think Florida's won the Cup twice over these like four episodes. That's nuts. We had a great season, but we couldn't bury it in the end. And Chicago loses in game seven of the conference finals. I've heard that before to LA. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a nail biter. Oh my God, so exciting. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the result we wanted, but you never know. We got 25 something teams to go, 26 to go. So um, stay tuned for a lot more exciting stuff in this series. So guys, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and leave a comment again, suggest, give me your feedback. I mean, I think the issue here in this episode why there weren't many trades because of how close we were to the salary cap. So that just might be how it goes with teams like Chicago who are close to salary cap. For teams like that, maybe you want me to turn the salary cap off or for the entire series, want me to turn the salary cap off like I turn waivers off. I don't know. 
This series is in your guys' hands. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe for more of these videos because they're coming often now. And until next one, I'll see you guys then.